Shaw, Mark Harvey joining me on our grand final week coverage. Gentlemen, welcome. Clinton. Evening. Good seeing you again. SMSs, emails start coming in. Sam says the system's a joke. Someone else says justice has been done. Off the email, Scott, a West Coast fan says, surely with Barry getting cleared, not even getting a one-week suspension, this sets a massive precedent to allow players to punch their opponents in the stomach and injure them with no repercussions. What do you think? And get off. Um, uh, best possible scenario for Sydney Swans was for him to get off tonight. It doesn't drag on. They can refocus on the job at hand. Uh, they'll settle from here on for the rest of the week. And, uh, well, Barry, uh, he's probably yeah. lucky yes. in, in hindsight, but uh, it's good to see that he's playing. We, we said last night here on our Brownlow special that he was always going to get off successfully challenging from behind play to win play. There was the precedent with the DVD at the start of the year and with Chris Tarrant in round 18. They only had to make that the successful appeal and they've done that. Yeah, they did. Look, well done to Barry. We didn't want him to miss yeah. out in the grand final, but it's an inept system and he's very lucky that he's involved in the year when the system's in because yeah. that was behind play and they say it's in the next mm -hmm. stanza. Well, you could do exactly the same positioning 120 metres away from it because every time the ball moves, yes. you move exactly the same as they did sure. to go to one side of the ground. So, very lucky. Uh, um, you know, and I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to make changes, so mm. good luck to him because no one wants him to miss out mm. in the grand final. He, he will come down to the 93.75 points, which will be carried forward on his record. And had he not had a, a good record from the last three years, he wouldn't have been able to get the, uh, the oh, early Oh, who play. cares? So, who cares with a 93? It doesn't matter how much you got over your head in the grand you, you're final. You're playing a grand final. Exactly. But there was a general belief from the public that uh, Barry was always going to get off because yes, of the yeah. investment made by the AFL oh. in Sydney. No, a lot of people yeah. would say that to you. Cons uh, conspiracy the theory. Yeah, well, yeah but well, do you, do you believe that? No. Nah. No, me personally, no. no but, uh, yeah. you know, they had spent something like 100 million in that mm. region. I, I just think the AFL yeah. also went in and charged him with a little bit more to make an impact, mm. knowing it was going to come yeah, down, yes. and now they look all right. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah, if they only right. went and he wasn't uh, charged and he mm. didn't get a week in the first instance, well, the, uh, the crowd, uh, the public would yeah. have gone berserk. Well, let's head to the tribunal now where Adam White from the Fox Footy News team joins us with more details. Adam, welcome. Um, what can you tell us? Was he only pleading... Uh, trying to change that one aspect from the behind play to the in play? Yeah, look, he was, and that was the contentious issue, I guess, over the last couple of days, whether they'd only go that way or they'd also <laughs> try and argue whether it was negligent and not reckless, which mm -hmm. is what the match review panel did. But we'll get to that shortly. All the details here, what has been a dramatic evening. But first of all, Barry Hall, he's not so bad after all. Are you relieved, Mr Hall? Are you relieved? Oh, no, just, just, first of all, I'd like to thank all the support I've got uh, the past couple of days, all the Sydney supporters, Melbourne supporters. Um, we've got a couple of people outside who's uh, turned out for me, so that's fantastic. Um, and now I'm just really looking forward to Saturday. Um, it's a big event and I can't wait to get back into it. Plenty of media down there, Adam. So did he challenge that part from, from like reckless to negligent? No, look, he didn't. He was happy to cop that on the chin and actually admitted that it was a silly thing what he did do. But what it was all about was this in-play, behind-play yeah. issue. I know that Tony and, and Mark were just talking about it before. And what they're able to do uh, and argue successfully was that Barry Hall was in close enough proximity to be deemed to be in play, first of all, and secondly, and probably more importantly what they argued was that Barry Hall was in a position to be in the next passage of play, and as a consequence that was deemed in the end as being in play. So when they reconfigured all the demerit points, it ended up as 93 points, which means a reprimand, it means he can play in the last Saturday in September. Emmett Dunn, Wayne Schimmelbush, Richard Loveridge were the panel members tonight. Was there ever any indication that they were going to go against Hall? Look, I don't think so, Clinton. I, I think that um, just listening to all the evidence, the, the case started just after six o'clock and it, it went for a good hour and a quarter thereabouts. But from what we could get with all the evidence, with all the vision, I think the interesting thing was, was when the incident actually did take place. Did Ben Matthews have the footy? Was the ball in dispute? And when we are able to get the Sydney Swans version of events, they actually broke it down and showed uh, two or three different incidents at the same time. Now, Ben Matthews didn't have the footy, the ball was in dispute, and that was probably the only dodgy thing from Hall's point of view was that, OK, if he's going to make a lead and try and make himself available to get the footy, Sydney had to have possession of the ball. That wasn't the case. The ball was in dispute. As many as five play players were able to get the footy, but what Sydney argued was that if Barry Hall was going to be fair to his teammates, if he was going to put himself in the best position to get the footy, he had to try and make himself available should one of those Sydney midfielders get possession of the ball when it was in dispute. And that was what they were able to argue successfully. We also saw a different vision tonight.
tonight, guys, we saw vision from the punt road end. And when we saw that, we actually saw the incident take place so very, very quickly. Within two seconds, Hall had actually struck Maguire and then had his hands in the air wanting to call for the footy. And I guess that also showed from a vision point of view that Hall may have actually been in the play. So that was, I guess, the, the most significant incident, significant evidence that we saw. And we also had Hall admitting, yes, I did do a silly thing. It was reckless. I probably shouldn't have done it, but it was all about getting in a position to get the footy at the next available opportunity. Last one on this before we talk about Travis Gasper. Terry, Forrest QC called in by the Swans to work with Hall. Did he speak tonight at the tribunal? Yeah, look, it was a, it was a great situation, Clinton, because we had... Uh, Mr Forrest, who was uh, in a position where he took the Chris Tarrant case on and, and was able to successfully argue a similar point of view. So he was, uh, he was there again. And the interesting thing, guys, was that this was a, a, pretty, uh, a pretty interesting plan they put in place because Barry Hall came down on a chartered jet from Sydney and arrived at Essendon Airport, not at Tullamarine like a lot of people thought. He tried to make a, well, a silent or a secret entrance into Melbourne, but Fox 40 cameras did actually spot him at an inner city hotel or office building where they tried to build their case today. As I said, Terry Forrest, Terry Forrest did talk, Barry Hall did talk, but what we didn't see was Matt Maguire. There was some suggestion that he may have given evidence. That didn't happen today. What Sydney did do, guys, was they rolled the dice. They went on the in-play, out-of-play, category they were successful and Barry Hall is free to play all right before we let you go Travis Gasper also challenging his offer of a one match suspension like Barry Hall it drew 225 points has that case begun if so what aspect are they challenging yeah look that's just just about to get underway guys with all the uh, interesting Barry Hall it started a little bit late so I'm not hundred percent sure what's going to happen there but my belief on this one is that uh, he hasn't got as good a chance as Barry Hall to get off this one simply because you couldn't argue that this one was in play because the siren hadn't even started to commence play so I think Travis Gasper might be in a bit of trouble tonight guys Adam thanks for that we'll get back to you if you get a result on that later in the show thanks guys Adam White at the AFL. The AFL has not done a very good job in explaining what reckless or negligent or intentional means. These are terms borrowed from the criminal law system. Are you satisfied with what those terms mean in context of AFL footy? Uh, I'm satisfied with the way they've been defined. I mean, it's, that we haven't had to take any reference to the law because uh, with Adrian Anderson's system, he's, he has established a definition in, in his tribunal guidelines for those three terms. So that's fine. I think what we know after the Barry Hall decision, though, is that as part of the review, Behind play yeah. and in play will be one of the things that will be much more, uh, much uh, more mm. clearly distinguished than, uh, the, the, than one thing as come out of, out. the one thing that came out of that was that Matt McGuire was questioned about the impact of being hit, and and everybody, Matt McGuire, six mm. foot four, one of the strong men of the competition. I don't think he winches. Huh? He, look, he's got him in the right spot, hasn't he? Yep. And he couldn't get any air in, and that meant that's you just can't move when that happens. Yep. So he should never have been questioned about how hard he was hit because mm. it wasn't his fault. But that's happened. Did they ever get vision, though? Did we ever hear there was any other vision than that one camera angle? Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. The there was. Yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah. Uh, Hall involved in a couple of other incidents. Let's rip through them quickly. Some thought that uh, Barry got some leniency on the night. Did he run too far after taking the mark? Uh, look, I think when you count it, it's, a, it's about 14 steps. I think one more and he was in big trouble. I know okay, if, no. if he'd made it to the square, he was in real strife. But uh, it's, it's probably a little over 15 metres, but in terms of number of steps, uh, he's right on the borderline, so I'm happy that it wasn't paid. OK, he was denied a mark when Nick Del Santo was deemed to have touched this kick. Is this a tough one for the umpires when these come in? These are very tough, and uh, look, at the end of the day, the, the umpire wasn't sure and paid a, paid a, paid a bounce. It was definitely a mark. I, Tim Lane said he seems to have got something on it. I don't reckon Nick Del Santo has touched that. And, and the players uh, seem to stop too, which yeah, is what we, as you said earlier about governing themselves. They did, and I think there would have been a great outcry if there had been a very close finish and that mark yeah. hadn't been paid. Hall went to the umpires at three-quarter time under the direction of Paul Ruse, something that is outlawed. Paul Ruse knows that, but he still wanted to do it. Yeah, look, it was great theatre, and uh, I don't know what impact that might have had on the, the Swans' mentality going to that final quarter. The umpires weren't interested. They are were always going to put in a letter about that, and uh, look, there's a good, we've, we've probably seen it once this year, and that was it. Mm. Um, and I think the Swans will pay a pretty heavy penalty. Aren't the captains allowed to go? I thought they were allowed to no, go. No, 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 no longer. No, no, no longer. Because it was so orchestrated. Uh, yeah, that and, was and what it been. Well, that was then, too. Well, yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm. When they were able to do that in the past, the captains go and talk to you, did that do any damage to the Brownlow votes? 
to the Brownlow votes. <laughs> well, the campaign. Campaign. No, campaign. no campaign. but it did to their credibility because I mean I can remember vividly Nathan Buckley being sent in one day. I think uh, I think what after your that? time, yeah, sure, but uh, I, I certainly being sent in and being told it was like 10-3, the free kick count against Collingwood, and we said, "Well, stats are on the scoreboard," and he looked round, he just shook his head. <laughs>